Okay, so let's have a look at some motion in a straight line. So this is the extra little chapter that we're going to add in. Okay, because our book doesn't do it until year 12, but I want you guys to have a look at it anyway uh, this year so that we know what it's about. So motion in a straight line, so think about a particle and how a particle moves. Okay, so if it can only move in a straight line, there's only two directions it can go. And those directions are forwards. Okay, so forwards. Or, let me just give me one sec. So it can go forwards, or it can go backwards. Okay, it's only two real directions that this thing can go. So forwards or backwards. Okay, so when we refer to the position that a particle is in, uh, refer, we refer to it as its displacement. So the displacement measures the distance of a particle from a fixed point. So let's say that this here is our fixed point or our origin, okay? Our displacement measures how far it goes in either direction, okay? Um, so it can be positive or negative according to which side the origin is on, and we usually tend to use positive to the right and negative to the left, okay? So in this whole sort of thing, what we're doing is we're imagining how a particle moves back and forth over time, okay? And so essentially what we can get is we can get graphs of these particles over time, okay? Now, what we can say as well is when a particle is the origin, the displacement is zero. So when it's sitting here, displacement is equal to zero. Okay, so that's the last little thing. So that is x is equal to zero. So once we have a displacement, what we want to look at is how quickly is it moving left to right? And so when we're looking at how quickly something moves, we're looking at its velocity. So velocity, or V, is the rate of change of the displacement. So the velocity can be given, so we can sometimes use X with this little dot above it, which is talking about the velocity, okay? But this is just dx dt. So it's the derivative of X with respect to time. So basically, you know, if you have a function graph and it looks something like this, okay? So what we're saying is this particle is moving, um, probably can't be on that side. But let's say we've got this particle that's moving something like that, okay? And so the derivative is basically saying, well, how quickly is it moving at that exact point? So that's the velocity. So velocity is our first derivative. So a few things about the velocity. If the particle is moving to the right, the um, velocity is positive, okay? So if my particle is moving forwards, okay, so in this general direction, we say that the um, velocity is positive, okay? Because it's accelerating, or oh, sorry, not accelerating, I don't use that word just yet, but it's moving you know, in that direction, in that positive direction, so it must be positive. And of course, if it's moving backwards, we say the velocity is negative, okay? Because it's going backwards. It's like facing this way, but it's going in reverse. Okay, of course, the velocity can um, doesn't have to be measured from the center as well. So if um, the particle stopped there, or started there, I should say, and moves backward, moves backwards, then the velocity is still negative, and just like if it started up here and it moved this way, then the velocity is positive. Now, the last thing that we're going to talk about is the acceleration. Now, the acceleration A, we can denote as x with two dots. And this is dv dt, okay? So this is our acceleration. So it's our rate, excel, excel e ration. So our acceleration is essentially the derivative of the derivative of x, or the second derivative of x. Okay, so again, if the acceleration and the force of the, on the particle is to the right, it is positive. If the acceleration is to the left, it is negative. Okay, so basically our acceleration is the rate of the velocity. So basically if the velocity, so it's basically speeding up and our acceleration is going to be going this way as well. So if they're both heading that way, then it is um, going faster, okay? Now, if our acceleration is this way, so in other words, um, our acceleration is in a negative direction, okay, if the velocity is still going forwards and the acceleration is going in the opposite direction, it's basically saying it's slowing down. 
So think of it like, you know, if you're sewing so down, the force that's being applied on you is actually going the opposite direction because you're applying a break. Okay, so you're applying, so say you're going this way, you're applying a break, which means that the force is coming backwards. Okay, and so that's what happens if they're in different directions. And of course, if they're in the same direction, so if the velocity is going that way and the acceleration is going that way, okay, it's basically saying I'm going this direction and in that direction, I'm actually trying to, you know, go in a, quick, a much quicker um, direction that way. Okay, so those are the three different things that we need to look at. Now, just the last note on acceleration, um, two, is if the particle is not speeding up or slowing down, then the speed is not changing. So if the velocity is a constant velocity, then the acceleration is equal to zero. Okay, so we can look at this um, algebraically by just using calculus, and we can also use graphs as well. So what we'll do is look at two examples where we are using um, just the calculus, and we will also look at uh, two examples in which we just use the graphs as well. So displacement x centimeters of a particle at t seconds is given by x is equal to 4t minus t squared. Okay. And the first part says that um, we want to find when the particle is at rest. And the second part says how far does the particle move in the first three seconds. So if it's at rest, so part a, if it's at, at rest, then v must be equal to zero. So that is the derivative of the displacement with respect to time is equal to zero. So what we need to do is we need to find, well, what is the derivative? Okay, so if x is equal to 4t minus t squared, then the derivative of this must be 4 minus 2t. So this is at rest when 4 minus 2t is equal to zero, or in other words, negative 2t is equal to negative 4, or when t is equal to 2. So, therefore, the particle is at rest after 2 seconds. Well, I shouldn't actually use the word after. I shouldn't you say the word, or use the word at. So, at 2 seconds. So, once we hit 2 seconds, the particle is basically slowing down and it stops. Okay, so the next part of that question is what is the, um, or how far is the, does the particle move in the first three seconds? How far does it move? So basically in the first three seconds, what we need to do is we need to look at um, basically how far it moves all together. Okay, so essentially because it is a parabola, Okay, so this function is going to be moving in a crazy way. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the time when it's equal to zero and the time when it finishes. But because we have this resting point as well, it could potentially be a part. So like where this thing speeds up and then starts to slow down and then comes back for the last little bit. So this could be, you know, t is equal to zero, t is equal to one, uh, t is equal to two or t is equal to three. Alternatively, it could do something like this, where it stops and then it keeps going. So it's t is equal to zero, t is equal to one, t is equal to two, t is equal to three. So we're not 100% sure what this is doing when it gets to its rest point, if it's turning back around or if it's moving completely. So what we need to do is we need to check all these points. So we need to check this point here, this point here, and this rep point here, just in case it sped all the way up and started to come back, or if it sped up and just kept going through. So we'll start at t is equal to zero. Okay, so at t is equal to zero, um, we're just going to substitute this into our displacement to see how far it's gone. So x, so its essential, its starting position, so when time is equal to zero, so 4t minus t squared, so x is equal to four, lots of zero minus zero squared. Okay, and so in this case, at zero seconds, the displacement is zero. So basically it's starting at its starting point. Okay, so it's starting in the center. Okay, then after three seconds, okay, so we've got t is equal to three. So x is equal to four lots of three minus three squared. So that's 12 minus nine. So after three seconds, um, it has moved three centimeters. Now, as I said, that might mean that just from this point here to um, this point here is three or from this point here all the way to this point here is three. 
We're not sure if it's gone all the way up and then all the way back or if it's just made that big trip. So let's check and see um, at that turning point there. So after two seconds, so t is equal to two, we get x is equal to four lots of two minus two squared. So x is equal to eight minus four. So x is equal to four, okay? So after two centimeters, this thing has traveled four centimeters from the origin. But then after th three seconds, it's only traveled three centimeters from the origin. So what that identifies is that this thing has gone forward and it started at zero centimeters and it's gone to four centimeters. And remember this is at t is equal to two seconds. And then what's happened is it's come back a little bit because where it's finished at three seconds, okay, it's only traveled three centimeters, okay, from the origin. So basically the journey this little particle has done has it's gone over here and it's come back. So it's gone four centimeters plus that one little centimeter to come back. So the whole journey that this little particle has done, okay, so the particle has traveled four centimeters plus one centimeter. So therefore it has traveled five centimeters total in three seconds. Okay, so it's gone up and come back. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to have a look at a bit of a longer example. Okay. With a few more extra steps. Okay, so the displacement of particles given by x is equal to minus t squared plus 2t plus 3, cent 3 centimetres, where t is in second. Let's find the initial velocity of particles. So we'll just do these one at a time. Okay, so this is part b. And I don't think I put part i. So I should actually change this to... A I and I I like that. Okay, so find the initial velocity. So the initial velocity is just the velocity when t is equal to zero. Okay, and velocity is equal to the display the derivative of the displacement with respect to time. So if x is equal to minus t squared plus two t plus three, then dx dt is equal to minus two t plus two. So at time is equal to zero, so our initial velocity, we're just going to substitute that into this. So dx dt at t is equal to zero is minus two lots of zero plus two, which is equal to two. So initial, or well therefore initial velocity is equal to two centimeters per second. So it's moving and it's at two centimeters. So basically, as I click the timer, it's moving at a rate of two centimeters per second. Show that the particle has constant acceleration. So to show it has constant acceleration, we need to look at the second derivative. So acceleration is the second derivative. Or if we know our velocity, is equal to minus 2t plus 2, then dv dt, which is equal to our acceleration, is equal to minus 2. And therefore, because minus 2 is a constant term, the acceleration is constant. Okay, so essentially what it's saying is that the particle has a constant acceleration of minus two centimeters per second per second. Part three says find when the particle is at the origin. So if we're trying to locate a position where the particle is sitting, then we're looking at the displacement. So again, the displacement is minus t squared, oh, sorry, minus t squared, plus 2t plus 3, and so we want the, um, at the origin, which is when x is equal to 0, so what we're going to do is we're going to make it 0 is equal to minus 2 squared plus 2t plus 3, okay, and we're going to factorize this, so this is the same as 0 is equal to t squared um, 
minus 2t minus 3, if I move everything to the same side, or just multiply everything by negative 1. Okay, so this is then equal to, um, so two numbers that add to give to minus 3, but, oh, sorry, add to give to minus 2, multiply to give to negative 3, are t and minus 3, and t plus 1. So therefore, t must be equal to negative 1, and t must be equal to 3. Now, the problem with this is that time doesn't actually have negative values. Okay, because if we're starting recording at time zero, okay, we can't take in this consideration, this value here. So basically, we can only take into consideration the positive values. So therefore, what we say, it's at the origin, at three seconds. Okay, so since time cannot be negative, the particle will be at the origin at three seconds. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to look at part four, which says find the particle's greatest displacement. So think of a so think of the picture of this. This is a parabola, and the cool thing about parabolas are they look like either this, or alternatively, they look like this. Now, if we want to find the maximum point of the displacement, we're looking for the highest peak. Now, because the parabola here is a negative parabola, okay, then it's going to look like the upside down parabola like this. And so the peak should be this part here, which is the turning point. Now, the turning point of this graph, well, if we have a think about it, so if this graph, you know, so if this particle goes out and reaches its further point and it comes back here, what happens at this point here is that the velocity swaps between positive, so it's increasing, 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 because it's getting like it's getting faster and faster, and it slows down and starts coming the other way, which is negative, 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 negative. So the velocity the derivative in this portion of the graph is equal, is a negative one, and the derivative in this portion is positive. So over here at this point, or at this peak, the velocity must be equal to zero. Or in other words, dx dt must be equal to zero. Okay? So find the particle's greatest displacement, so we're looking for when the derivative is equal to zero, when it's furthest away, so when the derivative is equal to zero. So part four says we want to find it when dx dt is equal to zero, okay? So when is dx dt equal to zero? So again, we're going to find our, well, we've got our dx dt up above, it's minus two t, so what I should say is what we want. Now dx dt is equal to and as we said before, it's this term up above, which is minus 2t plus 2, because we have already found it. So minus 2t plus 2. So we're trying to find when this is equal to 0. So minus 2t plus 2 is equal to 0. So that's when minus 2t is equal to minus 2. So that's when t is equal to 1. Okay. And there we go. That's when the velocity, or sorry, that's when it is the third, or the displacement is the greatest. So we should write, so the greatest displacement is when t is equal to one. Okay, now the last part. Oh, sorry. This is when the, so that's the velocity um, where it is. So hang on, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. So this greatest displacement is when t is equal to 1, but we actually haven't found when what that displacement is. We've only found when it is by using that. So at t is equal to 1, so what we can do is we can substitute that into our, um, our, uh, our displacement form, which is minus t squared uh, plus, I think it's 2t plus 3. So when t is equal to 1, x is equal to minus 1 squared plus 2, lots of 1 plus 3. Okay, so the minus is not in it with this one, so it's going to be one, sorry, minus one plus two plus three. So the displacement is at 
when at four centimeters. So this thing is the biggest at four centimeters. Okay, now last bit we've got is, we've got sketch the graph showing the particle's motion. Okay, so now we're essentially just going to be putting all the details together to be able to sketch what this thing looks like. Okay, so here's my graph here. Now I don't need to worry about this or um, this side here because um, we can't have negative time. We can have one, two, three, and four seconds. Okay, and this is our seconds and this is our centimeters, which is one, two, three, four. Okay, so some things that we need to know. So our initial velocity, so our initial, is when time is equal to zero. So that was one of the first things we found, the initial um, time is equal to zero. Uh, at t is equal to zero, we found that displacement, or sorry, we haven't found the displacement when time is equal to zero, but if we substitute that in to the original x value, um, we get so zero squared plus two times zero, which is all zero, and then just plus three. So this function is initial when t is equal to zero. So x is equal to zero or minus zero squared plus two lots of zero plus three. So x is equal to whoop, three. So this thing starts up here. Now we know that it has a maximum point at four centimeters when t is one. So when t is one, it has a maximum here. And we know that the displacement is zero from back up here at three seconds. So the displacement is zero. So that means that it's gonna cross back over at the origin. Okay, at three seconds. So the graph of this thing is going to look something like this. Okay, and so that would be my x is equal to minus minus t squared plus 2t plus 3. Okay. So that's basically getting um, using the calculus to work out um, our velocities and our accelerations and our stuff for a particle. What we're going to be looking at next is we're actually going to be looking at the graphs of these things, okay? And then working out some solutions from the graphs. So this one says the following graph shows the displacement of a particle from the origin as it moves in a straight line, okay? So this is displacement. So basically this point starts, okay? So if I was to draw this next to it, this point starts down here. The origin is here. Okay, so this is what's happening essentially in real time. It goes up to the origin, comes back down to the root of the origin, and then comes back up again, and like that. And so that's what it looks like, but all on top of each other. Because remember, it's only moving in a straight line. This is just depicting what's happening over time. So this one moves up, down, and back up again, like that. Okay. Or alternatively, um, I think, I don't know if this has a laser or not. Ah, oh, we just had the laser. That'd be pretty cool. Anyway, so basically it goes up, then it goes down. Oh, not that far. Up, down, and then back up again, like that. So that's the velocity. Oh, sorry, that's the displacement. Now, when is the particle at rest? So basically, when does it stop moving? Well, it stops moving at this point here and this point here because it has to stop and then turn back around. So. Um, a part I, when is it at rest? At rest at T3 and T5, okay? So that's basically when it's turning around. Um, when is it at the origin? So basically when does it pass through the origin? So that's pretty easy as well. It passes through the origin at, so at origin at T, two, T4, and T6. And when is it moving at its greatest speed? So basically, when is the gradient the biggest? Now the gradient looks the biggest to me between T is equal to uh, one and T is, uh, sorry, T is equal to zero and T is equal to two because it covers a lot of distance be um, between those two seconds. Whereas the other gaps, so they're all two second gaps, okay, but uh, they're not as steep as this one here. So part three, okay, when is it at its greatest speed? Um, 
So the speed is greatest when the graph is its steepest. Okay. Um, actually, I'll tell you what. When is it steepest? Just looking at this, it's pretty steep. So it's pretty steep along here. Just looking at these parts here. And I would almost argue that they're a bit steeper. So I would almost say... I think this one here is the, probably the steepest of the lot. Um, if, there's only, if there's only a way for me to get up a ruler. Here we go. No, that's not going to work. Anyway, basically, you're just looking for when it's the steepest. I think it might be when t is equal to 4. So steepest equals highest velocity. And I'll let you guys decide on that one. But essentially, you're looking for the steepest. And if you make some connection that the steepest is, steepest is the highest velocity, so you should be fine with that. So I'll say highest velocity is equal to, and at T4. I, that is my guess, because it just kind of looks a bit steeper than the others. Okay, let's have a look at another one. The following graph shows the displacement x of a particle over time T. Sketch the graph of its velocity. Ooh, now the velocity is a cool one. So essentially we're looking at the gradient of this graph. So some points to point, oh, so some parts to point out. Um, if we were to draw a line across here, then the velocity was zero. If we were to draw gradient lines all the way up along here, the velocity for all of these is a plus, okay, because it's all positive. And if we went along here, then it's all negative. So you've got negatives, zero, and a positive. Okay, so remember the gradient function is just the function that indicates what is happening with the uh, with the steepness of the graph. So between zero and one seconds, okay, the graph starts off negative and then gets to zero. So the value of the derivative, the values from here to zero are negative and they slowly approach zero. So essentially what happens is we get a graph that starts with a pretty steep negative in the, uh, value of uh, its gradient and then it approaches that flatness. And then once it goes past the flatness, the steepness of that curve starts to increase and gets positive and positive and positive, just like that. Okay, and so that's our graph, essentially. So a parabola, and you can think of it too about the derivative. So this is a parabola. So let's say the parabola is just y is equal to x squared. Then the derivative is y is equal to 2x, which is a um, straight line. Okay. And this is a parabola. So if you ever have a parabola shape um, graph, then the derivative graph should be a straight line. Now, if we were to sketch the acceleration graph, like it's asked us to in part two, um, let me get rid of that A and put a part one. So in part two, it's asked us to graph the acceleration. The acceleration is just the derivative of the derivative. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to look at our second graph, the one that we've made, and look at the um, values of the derivative along that. And if you have a look at this one, um, the gradient, so we're not looking at the values, we're looking at the gradient of this line. So the gradient is positive all the way along. And if we were to work out the gradient, we would notice that the steepness, if I had drawn it properly, should be the same all the way along. So the rise over the run is the same all the way along. So essentially it's a positive gradient and it's the same all the way along. So my graph should be a positive straight line because the line, the value is always the same. So t is equal to zero, uh, not zero, one, t two, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and of course there would be no uh, thing, nothing in the zero because there's nothing in the zero of our original one. Okay, so it looks something like that. And you can imagine that too, because the second derivative of the function of a straight line or a parabola 
is just a constant term, okay? So we should have a constant value um, for our line for that one. Okay, so part three says find when the particle is at the origin. Okay, the particle is at the origin, well, at time zero and at time two. Okay, so there's nothing tricky about that. So three um, at origin at t zero and time two. And part four says when the when is the particle at rest. So it's only at rest when it turns around, when that velocity hits that zero. So part four at rest when t one or at t one at rest at t one. Okay. And so that's going to finish off our video. So we're going to be looking at some graphs and we're going to be looking at some things. Now, as I said, there's going to be some mass and focus for this one and it's probably going to be the only time we're going to be really looking at mass and focus for this. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to leave it there and I'll talk to you guys in the future.